Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be walking you through this watercolor portrait. This one is relatively simple, so I think if you're just getting into portrait painting, this is a great exercise and something you can follow along with. So if you guys do end up liking this video, I do them monthly on my Patreon and patrons get to also choose the reference photo. So if you guys enjoyed this one, please consider checking out my Patreon. That link will be in the description. I have also left the reference photo and the link to the line work so you can either sketch it by yourself or just trace the line work over to your watercolor paper. Whichever one you choose and whichever one is more comfortable for you. This video is more focused on really getting into portrait painting and the kinds of things that I do sort of as an exercise for when I paint faces. The paper that I'm using is 100% cotton paper. This one is the SMLT art paper, but there are so many different options out there. Just make sure that your paper is also cotton paper because if it's not, it could react really differently to how mine did and that can be really frustrating. So the colors that I'm using are all the basic colors from the Sennelier test pack. The first one is ultramarine blue, a lemon yellow, the red in this one is called bright red and the last one which i think is not as easy to find is chinese orange but you can replace the chinese orange in this palette for burnt sienna when you're arranging your colors in your palette you might also want to keep them in the same way that i arranged them in mine so that at a certain point you will know which colors i'm using so now we really can start. So first thing I'm doing is loading up my brush with water before taking some blue and mixing it in with the Chinese orange. This time I'm starting with a dry paper so that the paints that I will put in later on will be contained where I put them on. If I wanted them to spread out, I would wet my paper before I start. But for now we're starting with dry paper and we're just going to get that blue and Chinese orange mixture and put that primarily where we think the shadows should be. So in the eyeballs especially. And then we're going to take that to the shadows that will be under her nose. And you can see there's not that much paint in my palette. This is mostly water. We do want to keep this blue somewhat subdued because we're basically just laying down the undertones for the shadows. Her actual skin tone will look very differently from this one after we're done. And then I'm just adding more color to where the edges of her eyeballs would be. Since it's wet, those colors will just go towards the rest of the eyeballs. Then I am bridging the gap between where her brow would be and then as the paint is getting smaller in my brush and I'm just dragging that over to her cheeks where the shadows aren't as dark. I also wanted there to be a shadow on her nose right there so we're just putting that in. And then I am also just painting a little bit of the mouth right here. And since we've added in that Chinese orange, what it did is sort of just neutralize the blue that we had. But when we're painting some of the cooler parts of the painting, we're just going to add more of the blue and less of the Chinese orange. So I'm taking more of that blue so I can paint this part of her palm that's facing us. Also make sure while you're doing this that you're constantly adding water to your brush so that um, these colors move on their own but then also that you're not using colors that are, will be too strong for these very first layers. So now I am still using the same blue but this time with a lot more water and sort of just dragging what I already, the colors that I already have and more like feathering them out towards the rest of the face. So I am taking that same color and painting that part of her shoulder right here. 
basically this whole first layer is just us painting in the shadows sometimes there will be shadows that are darker than the rest and sometimes shadows will be cooler So this next part, we're gonna add more of the Chinese orange and some of the red to our blue. And we're not gonna wait for the paper to be dry this time. What we want is for these next layers of colors to mingle with the blue that we already have. So you can see I am mixing my red with a little bit of the Chinese orange. And I just want to take that and put that over to color some parts of her nose. And then we are taking the mixture that we mixed and just dropping that on the edge of her eyes where we would see more of the veins. And because that part of her eye is still wet, that, that color is just going to spread onto the rest of the eyeball, which is what we want. I'm also taking that same color with a little bit more of the red and the Chinese orange to paint in her lips. But then what I'm doing after I've painted in her upper lip is just cleaning up my brush and taking what's already painted on her upper lip and dragging that down to her lower lip. And then what we're doing is just taking some of the Chinese orange and painting the edges of her eyelids this time so that we can have more color to the parts of her eyes. On some parts where it's darker, like her eye bags, we can start to mix in the blue and the Chinese orange to get sort of this more neutralized and darker brown than the rest. If some of the color ever spreads itself too much to the rest of the eyeballs, you can just nudge it back with your wet brush since um, at that stage while it's wet it's very movable. So then we're taking more of that Chinese orange and once again painting some parts of the bridge of her nose that way and you can see since it's still wet that color is just spreading over so I'm just gonna nudge it over to her cheek and then add some more of the reds to it so in this stage this painting especially while it's wet is very it's very hard to control and so it's sort of part of the beauty of watercolors so try not to get too worried about where they're going right now. Just keep in mind that with watercolors you can always layer them later on. Since the face is looking a little bit too red and blue, what I'm doing is for the other cheek I am adding a little bit more of the yellow to my Chinese orange and using that to paint her, her left cheek. And then I'm also using it to add more warmth to her brow and her nose. And throughout all this time, there's a lot of water in my paint. So you can really see that these colors are very movable. You can spread out some of their edges while still keeping the original paint stroke vibrant. You can see me mixing my own green too to sort of paint this shadow that's under her lip. Sort of the main point of this whole thing is to add sort of where we think the proper undertones are gonna be for certain parts of the face. So um, once again, it's a mix so once again, we're taking that Chinese orange and blue and using that to paint her chin. But then we're adding more of that Chinese orange to paint in the rest of her cheek. Whenever it gets too crazy, you can always take your brush and lift out some of that color as long as these colors are wet. But then keep in mind that these colors will always dry lighter, so it won't always remain this vibrant. Um, so try not to worry about that, especially in this first few layers. It's always going to settle down more once it's dry. So you can see I am taking a very vibrant mixture of the red and the Chinese orange and just using that to paint in the, edge, um, the edges of the shadows for her face. 
and I'm also using the same color to paint her fingers with so when I'm painting my fingers I am just keeping it on the edges of the fingers I'm not really painting the whole thing so even though I did add um, that Chinese orange to it you can still see the highlights which are which are very blue and I want to keep it that way so you can see I'm also taking that same Chinese orange and blue over to her forehead and I'm okay with there being more color <clears throat> and then cleaning it up with just water so as it looks like right now I think it's in a good place the warm colors are where they should be and then the cool shadows are where it should be too so since I'm in a good place what I'm doing now is taking a smaller brush I'm loading it up with just my red and then using that to paint some of the details of her lower lip so I almost painted them in lines but it's gonna but we're gonna spread that out with the water later so what we're really doing is just letting those colors settle in as the lines before we spread them out with just the water so it looks more natural and then I am taking the blue and using that to paint in the shadow of her lower lip I think I may have added too much of that blue but that's okay since I caught that while it's still wet I can just lift it out with my same brush or even just spread it along to the rest of the shadow as long as these colors are wet it's very easy to manipulate them and to take some of them out so that's what I'm doing but after that I am taking my bigger brush and this time I am loading it up with pure blue to paint in the darkest shadows of the painting And while it's still wet, I am taking my Chinese orange and just sort of neutralizing that blue while it's still in the paper. So for me to mix in my darkest colors in the piece, what I'm doing is mixing my two opposite colors, the Chinese orange and the blue. And this time I am not adding that much water to them so I can really get this to be as dark as I want. So once I get that nice neutral brown that I want, I am then just going to take that and use that to paint the darkest parts of the shadows. I am also using it to paint some of her hair. At this point, I wasn't too sure about where I was going to take it because I initially was just going to do her face so I can get this to be as short of a video as possible but actually did just end up painting her face and I'm starting off with the darkest shadows in the piece. And once I have those shadows done, I am then taking my same Chinese orange and blue mixture. This time there's not that much blue. And this time also with a lot of water and I'm just using that to paint in some more parts of her skin. So since I think that I'm in a place where the undertones and the first layers are in the exact hue that I want, I think now is a good time for me to do the second layer on her skin. Before we can do that, we have to wait for all of this to dry so that the next layers wouldn't mingle with the ones before. So just go ahead and wait for your paper to dry and then once it is dry we're just gonna take my smaller brush once again and use that to start painting in some of the softer details on top of the ones you already have so now since we are using a smaller brush we can then just sort of start drawing on top of this painting so we're first starting out with just the chinese orange and sort of just lining her all of the lines that are in her eyes it may look too crazy but um, we're just really letting those colors marinate in there before spreading them out later on these are just sort of the 
blotches of colors you see when you're looking at somebody's skin tones. Um, usually it's not very even. So after we've placed those down, I am then cleaning up my brush and taking that and spreading out the colors that we already put in there. On this one, you can see that I started with the red and then ended it with the blue. Then using the same color, this time with the Chinese orange and just laying it out in between the bridge of her nose and her eyes too. So again, once you have those laid down, to, we're cleaning up our brushes and then just spreading them out onto the rest of the shadows to get this nice gradient. This is really sort of the backbone of how I paint my watercolor paintings is to let the colors stay on the paper for a while before I will just, before I can really go ahead and blend them out. So you see me right here just taking that same brown that I had before and using it to paint some of the strands of her hair that are falling on her face. So yeah, we're using the same colors and then just doing the same technique for her nose too. And now you can see me just going over some of the colors that I already put in there with a clean brush and um, spreading it out. I also used my same darker mixture to paint in the inner part of her lips. Once again, I am cleaning up my brush and mixing my... Chinese orange with a yellow so I can put in some of the warmth back on her lips It's because I think that that red is too cool For the rest of her face So really just added that yellow in for the highlights on her lips And then I am going back to my dark brown mixture the orange and the blue and using that to define the shadows more so I started off with more of the blue and then when I as I start to edge out towards the highlights I would then add more of the Chinese orange to my mixture so since we have that very bright Chinese orange on her face what we're gonna do now is take our bigger brush, load that up with a lot of water, and then maybe add some of the red in the palette, and then use this very watery mixture and, and spread the Chinese orange all the way to the rest of her cheek. And we're bringing that over to the other cheek, but this time with warmer colors. So it's mostly just a Chinese orange this time. And once again, just spread out only the edges of the edges of the streak that she just put down. Don't just blend out the whole thing. So we are then going back to our smaller brush and using that to paint a very dark version of the blue and orange mixture. This time there will be more blue than the orange. We just want it to be um, as dark as it can get basically so uh, we are just gonna paint that on the darkest parts of the shadows especially where her hand meets her face and on some parts of her hair so after that um, it's the same sort of other technique as before we are then using the same consistency so not that much water but this time it would be mostly just the Chinese orange and we are just gonna start to paint where we ended with the blue with the darker blue and we're gonna let those two dark colors just mingle with each other as we're painting the hair so you can see that even though it is just these two same colors I'm mixing, 
by changing up the quantities of the different colors we're able to get two very different colors out of just these two and so i think that not only do we see different um, variations in values in the colors but also we have different hues in the colors that we are using to paint our hair with and I think that we get um, a lot more depth that way. So you can see as we're moving up her head, the colors will start to get lighter and also warmer. So as we're going up, we would use more of the Chinese orange than the blue. And on the topmost part of her head, we will even start to just spread out those colors so it's lighter than the ones that are than the ones at the bottom, basically. Also, while we're painting the dark parts of the top of her head, since it is um, different lighting that's hitting her, I, I've just decided to make it more vibrant of a blue. So there is more blue on the darkest strands of her hair right here than the ones at the bottom. But on the other side, I would also still add the Chinese orange. But on both of them, um, after I've laid them, laid them down, I still spread them out with just water in my brush. And when I'm doing that, I'm making sure that as I'm spreading out these colors, I'm still following the direction that the hair is going. I'm not just blending it out um, in any direction that I want. So the next thing we're doing is just taking our bigger brush and doing the same mixture, the Chinese orange and the blue. And we're just going to use that to add color to basically the rest of her hair. We don't need the rest of her hair to be as detailed as the ones that are closest to her head. Really what I'm doing is just adding color to where her hair should be. Basically, the only thing that I'm keeping in mind while I'm doing this is to make sure that I'm still doing variations in color. So sometimes I would add in more of the Chinese orange, sometimes there would be more of the blue, and sometimes I would mix them up in the paper so I can get um, a nicer color variation that way. But yeah, mostly what I'm doing right now is just adding the barest amount of color to her hair so that it doesn't look out of place in the painting. You can see too that for the shadow that the tips of her fingers are making, I've just decided to make it cooler than the other shadows too, so it's mostly just the blue. I'm putting that in so that um, there's a nice separation between the fingers and her hair. And then going over the edges of that blue with a little bit of the Chinese orange too. Once again, after I have had those colors, I'm loading up my brush with just water and spreading those colors onto the rest of her hair. Then I'm using the same technique on this side, just adding more of that blue so I can get this nice vibrant blue as sort of an undertone on this end. And I'm still using a lot of water so I can spread it out too. And after that, I just took my Chinese orange to paint in sort of these shadows that um, her shoulder and her neck are making. I think it would have gone better with making sure that I don't lose the collarbone right here. But um, when I spread it out with water, I think I lost that shape. Yeah, but you guys should keep that in mind since sort of talking in hindsight right now. You guys can change up things that I messed up on. But yes, yeah, really make, it, make sure when you guys are painting this that you keep that shape of the collarbone. So on this side too, I've also decided to add in some of the yellow and I'm mixing that in with my Chinese orange just so I can add more of the warmth to the highlighted part of her shoulder so that the colors that are in here don't vary too much from the ones that are on her face. So because I've added those that yellow to her cheek, I want to add that to the other parts of her face.
so now we are once again trying to add some of the finer details of the face and before we can do that we have to make sure that this whole paper is dry so that when we add in those darker colors they don't blend into into the very vibrant colors that we put in for the very first layer so before you do this make sure your painting is dry and then we can get started we are once again using our smaller brush this time and using almost a pure blue to paint in her nostrils so when you're doing this and you're making sure it's really dark we're just adding enough water in with the blue to make sure it's workable but really this is mostly watercolors now as we go further along we're gonna be adding less and less water to our mixture we're also bringing that same dark color to darken up her lips and then we're gonna finally paint in her lashes we're being very careful this time because it's a very delicate process and it's gonna be hard to take out these dark colors on top of these very first light layers that we have so we're gonna have to be very careful this time especially since we're drawing lashes it's hard enough for me already but um trying to paint it with <laughs> A brush is gonna be a lot harder if you have an even smaller brush than this one with maybe not as long of bristles maybe it will be better because then you would have a lot more control it would feel closer to something like a pencil or a pen but yeah this is what I worked with and um, it was it was doable ev eventually but um, I did struggle a little bit on this part so you can see that I just painted in her pupils it's not her all irises so that i just look super tiny right now that is just her pupil because that is almost just pure blue i want to be able to add in some of the chinese orange just to add a little bit of warmth to the actual colors of her eyes towards the edges i would add in more of the chinese orange because those colors are supposed to be warmer and i'm i'm just taking that same color to paint in the lower lashes <laughs> i don't know that this went super well but i i did at least attempt it and then i am taking that same dark color and just roughly painting in the outline of her irises so for the inside of her irises that's not touching the the pupils i will slowly start to add in just the chinese orange before that it was either a mixture of both or just the blue so i don't think you can see it that well but there is more of the chinese orange to her eyes i'm just making the other one a little bit larger than what it looks like right now and yeah so I'm also just eventually adding in a little bit more red to one corner of her eye, especially because her eye is turned that way. We would we are supposed to see more of the veins that are holding onto it. I'm also using the orange and blue mixture to darken up her eye bags, just so I can add more depth to the whole area of of her eyes and her eyelids. So once again, I after I've put in those colors, I'm cleaning up my brush and just and then just blending out those edges. What I'm doing now too is sort of adding more warmth and darkening up her nose along with her cheeks because I feel like once I've darkened up her eyes, um, I've lost some of the, the values in the nose. So we're adding the same mixture first, the Chinese orange and the blue. And we're first focusing that on the underside of her nose, but then I am taking water on my brush and spreading the same colors that we put down outwards, but still following the contours of her nose. And we're doing the same thing to around the bridge of her nose. 
just because the way I think I had it, I sort of lose a lot of the structure. So I'm just adding in, I'm just put it, first putting in mostly the Chinese orange and then doing the same thing as before, spreading out those edges, but still following the shape of her face. And then what I'm doing is taking my same shadow mixture and just try to um, sculpt the indention that should be above her lips, which I kind of missed before. I This part of the face I always have troubles with. Um, I don't know how it is, but uh, what I did right now is just putting... <laughs> I did just put sort of like a line on there, but... Um, yeah, I'm taking that same color and putting it on her lip too because I think I missed a part of it also. And then I'm doing the same thing as I normally do and blend out what I just laid down. And now the only thing that's left is for me to take some my darker mixture with where it's mostly blue but with some Chinese orange and using that to shape sort of the opening of her mouth. What I'm doing is just painting on the edges of the opening and then cleaning up my brush and spreading out that same color so it doesn't look like I'm just drawing black in there. It just still looks like it's shadow. It's a shadow that's going softer as it goes to the middle. And then I am sort of mixing up the same mixture so it's more Chinese orange and taking that and just drawing in the shadow that's between her hand and her face because I will then use that same color to draw in her eyebrows. Eyebrows are another thing that have I have troubles with. Um, it's almost as bad as eyelashes for me. I think something to do with the how they grow that I just can't seem to grasp. But what I'm doing now is just keeping my hair strands dark on on the end that's farther that's farthest from the nose, and the strands that are near the nose I would keep light, so that it looks like it's thicker on the other end. That's really the only um, the way the only way that I do eyebrows. I wish there was I wish I could do them better, but I do think that it doesn't look as bad right now. So where I paint it over, I'm just spreading out so that it looks like it's part of the eyeshadow. Okay, I'm taking another mixture of the shadow and just darkening up the hair strand that's falling on her eye and on her eyebrow. I just want to emphasize this, these hair strands more because I feel like they add a lot to the photo. And I also like how it flows with the rest of the hair that's that's falling near her face. So we're just bringing that over to the rest of the hair that's framing her face. So once again, only the hair strands that are near the darkest shadows will remain dark. The tails of those hair strands we will be feathering out and following the flow of the hair still. So once we've painted in the darker shadows of the hair, I am then taking my bigger brush and using that to add more warmth to her hair. So basically just the same mixture but using more of the Chinese orange. Then I'm just darkening up the whole of her hair with some splashes of Chinese orange on some areas and on some areas I would keep cooler with just the blue. And then other areas too I would keep more neutral like, like right on top of her hair.
and then also just darken up the shadows that are near her part too. So as it gets farther from the focal point that is her face and her hands, um, I wouldn't be too worried about the details anymore. So as we're falling farther down her hair, I'm mostly just concerned about getting it to the value that I want. I'm not too scared about painting any of the hair strands that are over there. So now we are taking the same mixture again, but this time adding a little bit of the red and using that to paint the knuckles on her, on her hand. On some areas, I would start to make it, to make it darker by adding in just the blue. So that would be a right at the back of her palm. But then I'm also making sure that while I'm painting the shadows that I'm still leaving out some highlights between the fingers so that they are not just clumped together. So even though there are some parts of her fingers that I want to add more warmth to, like the tips of her fingers and where they bend, I'm still making sure that I'm not just covering up all of the layers that I put in underneath, that I'm still keeping the separation between her fingers. And then I am really just pumping up those shadows and those lines within the shadows by adding more of the blue so I can get this almost black mixture and just darkening up those lines where the shadows should be the darkest. After that, we are once again going back to our smaller brush and just using that to darken up the shadows that are on her face so that it sort of, sort of keeps up with the shadows that we've painted for around her hair. So it's the same mixture, the blue and the orange, before blending it out with just water in our brush. If it ever gets too dark like it did mine, um, just adding more water to my brush and really just scrubbing off the watercolor that I've put too much of. It's a good thing about working fast is that you can still do that while it's wet. So we're doing the same thing to her nose. Um, we're very slowly painting out the shape of her nostrils first. And then we are adding more shadow to right under the middle of her nose, which we will then blend out later on. And then we're also just using that same color to darken up her fingers before moving on to the next step. So I think this is okay. I just want to darken up the shadow that her palm is making, but then brighten it up with a Chinese orange. So I'm just painting out that shadow right there. I think it does a lot to the shape of her actual palm. And then after that, I am taking mostly the blue and darkening up more of the strands that are falling around her face. So I'm zooming you guys in so you see me doing the same thing to, to her eyes. And it's mostly just on her lashes. I want to darken it up more.
And also I am doing the same thing to the shadows inside her mouth. After I've put the shadows inside her mouth too, I am also just taking uh, the tiniest amount of blue and mixing it in with my Chinese orange. Then I'm using that warm-ish mixture to darken up just her upper lip. I'm starting from where her mouth is opening and then just spreading it out onto the rest of her upper lip so that it looks like her lip color has some natural transitions in there. And I think we are almost done with her face. So what I'm doing now is just adding the slightest amount of red to my brush. Um, this is mostly water. It just has the tiniest bit of red to it. And what we're doing is just almost glazing on top of her nose because I wanted to add in more of that color to her nose. So while I'm doing this, I'm being very careful not to scrub off the layers that are underneath it. Um, I'm just gently laying down this Chinese orange on top of the colors that I already have for her nose. So there's not that much watercolors, it's mostly water and it will dry even lighter than this. I just wanted there to be more of that warmth to the center of her face. And I'm doing the same thing to just on the edges of where her face meets her hands too before once again taking water and just blending it out to the rest of her jaw. So what's left now is to just take some of um, the same mixture and I'm just using that warmer color to paint in some of the hair that is almost just um, just touching her forehead. And then I am taking my bigger brush and just adding some more strands of hair that's falling on her shoulder and mostly to hide the fact that I didn't draw in her collarbone or her shoulder that much. I'm just putting those hair strands in there to, to sort of camouflage that lack of detail. But yeah, that's what I'm doing and this is the blue and the Chinese orange mixture. So after all of that, we are finally done with the actual painting. What's left for me now is to add in some very fine details. You can do this with gouache or just with um, white a white inked pen, but I'm just painting it on the highlighted parts of her face, especially her eyes. I wanted it to look wet and so I'm just adding that stripe of highlight in there. I'm looking at it now and I actually think that that was the only part that was necessary. That I think that I could have stopped right here and you guys could stop right here too. I think that after that it's just personal preference whether you guys want to add in more highlights or not. But um, actually I could wear before I added all of this now. But yeah, that is it for this whole painting. Thank you guys for painting it with me. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, I do them monthly on my Patreon. And thank you to my patrons for supporting me in case you guys are also watching this. Thank you guys for joining me on this one and I will be seeing you guys again soon.